In the words of the psalmist, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love endures forever. We gather, beloved, as God's people on this National Thanksgiving weekend, recognizing just how good God is. But even as we recognize how good God is, we really have to ask ourselves, do we truly have an attitude of gratitude? Do we truly display as God's people a generosity of word and spirit to say thanks? Thanks to you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. This past week, roughly 1,300 Jews, and so far, more than 1,500 Palestinians have been murdered. And the count continues. But not just in the Middle East. Parts of Eastern Africa continue to have warfare. Well, we know also of the ongoing war in parts of Europe. And of course, in our own land, the blood letting continues. So much so that people are now afraid of listening to the news. But not just listening to the news, hearing the callousness, the coolness that is taking place among our people. Sometimes what we bear stems from the seeds that were sown. So in a country that is supposed to be Christian, more churches per square mile than any other country and growing in a country that's supposed to be Christian. How many people actually listen and pay attention to what God desires? How many of us actually listen to the Lord because his word leads to life and yet in a country that calls itself Christian, so much death, so much pain, so much suffering. The context of the murders, the people who commit them, sometimes shock us beyond belief. Welcome to human flaws. Lord, I love to tell people, welcome to life. Do we truly have an attitude of gratitude in others? Today's gospel reading points out three ways that we can continue to cultivate or pray for the grace to have a spirit of genuine gratitude, a spirit that gives thanks. How do we have this ongoing spirit of thanksgiving to God and dare I say for each other? The first thing, when Jesus spoke in today's gospel from Matthew, he said, look at the birds in the sky. It took COVID perhaps to remind us to pay attention because we were all on the lockdown. And during the lockdown, the plants seemed greener. The air smelled fresher. The sea, for those who could see it, seemed brighter. And guess what? The birds seemed prettier. In times of the lockdown, Sometimes it was a beautiful singing of the birds on the outside that gave comfort and joy. But if a people were not paying attention, they would have missed these things. If a people are so caught up in their own minds and thoughts and agenda and activity and worry, that Jesus clearly says, don't stop on a worry. If they were caught up that way, they don't pay attention. And so the first thing about developing an attitude of gratitude is to pay attention. Stop going by the own agenda in your own minds. Stop getting lost in your own thoughts. Open your eyes and look. Look and see what is happening around you. If you happen to be in a car with a driver or passenger and someone stops to give you the way, pay attention. Someone has stopped. So what do you do in a moment like that? You wave your hand or you blow your arm. Not too long, not too long to say thank you. I say this particular thing all the time. 
that you wonder if people remember how to be people. Someone opens a door for you or holds the door so that you walk through. You simply hold your head straight and walk out. The very least to show a sign of humanity and humility is the nod. And if you wish, thank you, and you walk on. Because the reality is, beloved, the more we pay attention, the more we will see reasons to be grateful and to give thanks. The more we see a loving spouse getting up in the morning to go to work, a loving parent preparing meals and making sure you, the children, are more than equipped to go to school, the more we see when we come to church that the benches and the floors are clean, not taking it for granted, the more you actually come to church and realize we are celebrating our mass. The more you pay attention, the more you have reasons, we have reasons to say thanks. But the blind will not see it. People who allow the hate to follow their eyes will not see the love that is expressed. In a world like ours, where one group says of another to their children, you see those people across the border, you see those people who look different from us, they are not your friends. The more that type of thinking is cultivated, when we influence each other, not in terms of reaching out and building bridges, but doing what we can, sometimes deliberately, sometimes unknowingly, to erect barriers, then indifference turns to hate. Hate turns to vicious words. Vicious words turn into violent actions. And before you know it, bloodshed is the order to do. But a people who look and see that God who made everyone and everything looked and pronounced all things good, will have the courage to look at each other and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the spouse, the family, Thank you for the friends. Thank you for the ability to worship and gather. How many people this morning cannot go to church or the mosque or the temple or the home because they're running for their lives? How many people in our own Latin American and Caribbean region are afraid of worshiping because of the reality of being either punished or attacked. The reality is, beloved, when people fail to see all things and all people as good creations of God, we become poor. Make no mistake, you see people from the church. Make no mistake. You have people who come to church and don't have love in their hearts, and that's between them and God. Make no mistake, people come to church and are blind. They may not see either the beautiful decorations, the gift of Christ present in the Eucharist, the gift of being able to just come together and worship and say, Lord, thank you, this morning I woke up, I'm about ground, it's a good day. This morning, no government, no individual stops me from coming and giving you true worship. So thank you, Lord, but forgive me. I discolor it because I do not know how to love as I should. I sit in church, but my eyes are blind. My heart is cold, and therefore I do not know how to give you thanks. I don't even know if the thanks I offer is reaching you because I'm weighed down with my sins, with my ingratitude, with my selfishness and coldness. And these words are not just for this parish. It's a human experience. It's the reality of what it means to be human. Why is it that people can sit comfortably in church and still feel comfortable not talking to others. 
How do you say thanks to God for each parishioner when you have up somebody in your house? That cannot be working. That cannot be the way of a Christian. People who come to church and wonder, should I join the church? And they look at our behavior and our attitude. Are we convincing them? Come. Yes, we are sinners. We're weak. But come. Come anyway. Because God working on me, God working on you. But in order for them to be convinced, they have to see that we're trying. They cannot feel convinced if they neither hear from us, thank you, Jesus, nor see that thanks expressed in the way we relate with each other. Check yourself before you leave the house. Do you say to the Lord, Lord, not only do I thank you for the ability to come and worship you in your house, but I thank you for every parishioner, priest and parishioner. Do I really need those words when I say, if I say it? Because the first step towards having a spirit of thanksgiving and attitude of gratitude is to open our eyes. Pay attention. Look at the birds. Look at each other. Look at the surrounding. Look at Jamaica land we love. And give thanks for everything. As cold as our people can be sometimes, as aggressive as our people can be at times, as violent as our people are, manifested daily in the news. Beloved, when it comes to Jamaica, there's no place like home. This is a God-blessed country. People they mash it up because of attitudes and actions and words not in keeping with the kingdom. But this is a God-blessed country. I fully understand when people migrate, but believe me, there's no place like home. Where else can you go and see such beauty, such inspiration, how many times has the Lord come to rescue us, if not from the weather, then from leaders who forget what the kingdom of God is all about and the values that are to be instilled? We are all a work in progress. But that comes from recognizing that this God who made me made the other. And this God is working on all of us. And I must stop pretending to be God. And I must stop telling God how to run the show. I must tell God, Daddy, thank you. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, thank you that you empower me when I am too weak to walk in your ways. The second reality of cultivating and continuing and solidifying an attitude of gratitude is that when we learn how to pay attention to all the good things around us and stop being colored either by our minds or what others tell us. The second thing is, look with eyes of faith and see the hand of the Lord present in every moment and in every experience. What does Jesus say in the Gospel? After he says, look at the birds in the sky, he then goes on to say, how much more? Will your Heavenly Father provide for you? Being the one who provides for them. In other words, if our Heavenly Father is so very much concerned about the birds, how much more concerned is He concerning each of us as a son, as a daughter, concerning all of us as a community, concerning the entire world as His family? A family he wants to sit with at the end of time and enjoy his presence because that is what he loves. Remember the story of the ten who were healed? Nine lepers, having been healed, went away. But one leper who looked and saw that he was healed who looked and saw that the other nine were healed, he recognized something that the others weren't prepared to see. He recognized the hand of a merciful Savior, Jesus, in his life. 
And because he saw with eyes of faith, everyone saw the same thing, but he was the only one who looked and saw with eyes of faith because he looked and saw the hand of his God on his life. He came back. He did the Lord homage and he thanked him. And Jesus himself says, only one come back to say thanks. Where are the other nine? The people of Israel went through severe hardship when they were enslaved in Egypt. But when the time was right, Moses rescued them. And again, walking through the wilderness, they went through various hardships. But at every moment of suffering and complaint and criticism and condemnation and even begging to go back to being enslaved, somehow Moses worked miracles. Only upon reflecting on those experiences, not just of suffering, which every single one of us will experience at various moments in our lives, but also the rescue and the salvation that came. Only by looking back and looking with eyes of faith, they could see the hand of God present in all their experiences. We hungry? God sent for you. We thirsty? God provided water from the rock. We can't go any further. There's water blocking us. The hand of God parted the waters. Fast forward. Colonizers wanted to expand their domain, their own little kingdom. And to do that, they needed labor. Thus began the painful experience of enslavement. Very different in our history as opposed to slavery depicted in the Bible. For the time of pain, a time of death, a time of real crucifixion for the people in our Caribbean and Latin American region. Our ancestors endured many pains, many sufferings, many injustices. Only looking back because there is justifiably anger at what took place. Only looking back to see the hand of God working can we come to a place of thanksgiving, not bitterness, not violence, not being victims of the pain in our hearts and minds. For when we look back, we saw that harsh evil that took place. But we saw the hand of God somehow working to sustain, to motivate, to strengthen. Preachers were sent. Sometimes they were aligning to the real values of the kingdom and not using the Bible to enforce slavery. But he sent all the people who said enough is enough. And so a combination of resistance and rebellion led to the struggle against dehumanizing enslavement. Eventually, God raised our national heroes through their voices, through their actions, through their pain, their suffering, their sacrifice. We are now the inheritors of their work. And for the ancestors who worked to bring us to where we are, we give thanks. But they didn't do it on their own. The hand of God chose and channeled and worked through each of them. Today we give thanks that people, men and women, have a voice who can vote. How many of us actually participate in the electoral process? How many of us love to complain about the government and the opposition, but do not do our part in saying, this is who I would like to steer our country for the next few years? In a time of ongoing violence and war, beloved, when people encounter us, do they hear words of peace? Do they hear words of harmony and unity? Or do we allow our own emotions to color us so that our words and actions lead to so much hurt and pain that what's the response? Evil begets evil. I for an eye. And people forget that we're called to be a family of God to rise above what we experience in negativity and to still be alive. 
If we're going to cultivate this attitude of gratitude, we have to look and keep on looking at every experience and somehow see the hand of God working because that same hand is what has brought us to this moment. And we need to truly ask, am I grateful to my God? Because His hand continues to work through each and every experience in my life. Main purpose? To bring about my good, but also to bring about His glory. The more we trust in this powerful, ever faithful, present God, the more we will see His hand at work at all times. And guess what? If Daddy had backed me up, they have no reason to worry. Why worry? It changes nothing. Trust in the Lord. Call upon Him. Give Him thanks for the good and bad times. Give Him thanks for the celebrations and the challenges. Because the more we give thanks to God, the more His blessings come down upon us. If we continue, beloved, to cultivate this attitude of gratitude, let us then come to the reality that living as a people who give thanks, this is what pleases the Lord. What message are we sending when we say thanks to God? We are telling people, we are evangelizing that God makes a real positive difference in my life. As I listen to people in shock and pain over the, all the events happening in our world and now the one that has captured our attention foremost, war in the Middle East. They keep asking, how do we not hate the people committing these atrocities? And the only answer is to have that deep-rooted trust in God. The only answer is to surrender everything to the Lord in prayer. The only answer is to say, Lord, I don't understand why these things are happening, but Lord, I thank you that I can come to you in this moment in prayer and give you thanks. Jesus, before he departed, realized that we need to pay attention. So he says, this is my body. Stop looking all over the place. This is my body. Look at me. He knows that we we'll always be thirsty for spiritual things, even as other things compete for our thirst. So he says, look, this is my blood. Every time you come together, drink of me so that I may be in you and my grace may transform your coldness and ingratitude that surfaces too often. The thief on the cross couldn't do anything about his pain or suffering. But he looked and he saw Jesus. And he saw that the hand of the Father was with the Lord. So he cried out, Jesus! Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. When Jesus first started preaching, he said, the kingdom of God is among you. Jesus has brought the kingdom. We are in the kingdom. Are we truly living as kingdom people? At the top of the list is to give thanks to God. We are a people of the Eucharist, even though some Catholics do not believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. What does Eucharist mean? Thanksgiving. Give thanks. Every time we come to celebrate the goodness of God in the context of the Mass, we are a people who come to give thanks. But I go back and remind you of what I said. Even though we offer thanks to God, if we have attached weights on this word of thanksgiving, chances are the thanksgiving does not reach God. Because minds still need conversion. Hearts still need to change. Choices to draw closer to God need to be exercised. So, beloved, on this National Day of Thanksgiving, give thanks for our country. Give thanks for the experiences of the past, whether as a nation or in our individual lives, because if we give thanks, we can see the hand of God working always, at every moment, to draw us close to Him. 
And the more we choose to give thanks, we become more effective as disciples evangelize us to our God without even having to do anything else. Because when others see we are willing to come together to give thanks to God for good times and bad, for sickness or health, poverty or wealth, they see that we are a people who love our God. Why do we love Him? Because God first loved us. That's why we give Him thanks. How are we in existence? Because God chose to make each of us. That's why we give Him thanks. So beloved, give thanks with a